Hey, welcome back to Mocktails with Marina. I'm your host, Marina. And today we've got two very special guests from Seria Brewing Company. We've got co-founder and CEO Jody Villa, as well as her husband and co-founder Keith Villa. In Jody's words, he is normally the face of the brand when it comes to educating the public as he has been in the beer business for over 35 years. He has a PhD in brewing from the University of Brussels and created Blue Moon Beer in 1995 big fan. Back in the day, that was all I drank in college. <laughs> he is well-versed in the various methods of creating non-alcoholic beer and has even patented a process to make alcohol-free beer. Wow. With such a powerhouse couple in the room, I am so excited to dive right in and learn so much more. And so let's get right to it. Thank you both so much for joining me today. I really appreciate that you're here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks, Marina. It's our pleasure to be here. Yeah, and I am I'm just gonna dive right in because honestly, your guys' story and your um all the knowledge that you bring to the table is it can fill fill rooms for a long time. So I would love to hear from you. What is the founding story? Hey, do you want to start this or you want me to? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, like you said, um Keith is the brewer. Um he did he does have over 30 years of experience, more than that, in the brewing uh industry. He actually has a PhD in brewing from the University of Brussels in Belgium that he earned in 1995. Um, at which time he also created Blue Moon Beer. Um, and then at, for the next I'll, I'll let you talk about yourself. <laughs> that point. <laughs> well, yeah, just to I'll, I'll just uh kind of give an elevator speech version, but uh yeah, so I, I uh created Blue Moon and was in charge of Blue Moon uh, Beer and Brewing Company for, gosh, uh, until 2018. And then I retired because we were starting to um, launch around the world. And I, I would be off to, to Japan or New Zealand or South America for weeks at a time, get home, then all of a sudden have to pack my suitcase again to, to head to a uh, brewmaster Blue Moon Beer Dinner in Atlanta, Georgia for, for two nights. So the travel just got to be ridiculous. And so I, I mean, I enjoyed it, but it was just, uh, it, it was wearing me down. So we said, okay, I'm going to retire. Uh, and Jody, she retired from her day-to-day -day job, which she is a, was uh, a civil engineer. So she she is an, a practicing engineer. So we retired, started uh, Seria Brewing Company, where we focused only on alcohol-free beers. And... Uh, Launched in 2000, late 2018, and initially we we put uh, cannabis in the beers for the Colorado market, uh, but we got out of that, and uh, we've been focusing only on alcohol-free beers since uh, 2020. Yep, 2020. And I appreciate Marina that you you even said it right. It's Seria rhymes with area. Sometimes yeah. people don't get that right. <laughs> this is such a cool story, and I love that you know we're we're seeing this in general this trend in the industry where you know of course zero proof market is really taking off in general it's getting a lot bigger so you see some companies who they're they're genuinely in it but then there's others that are just like trying to jump on the bandwagon and throw a product out there so you know i i'd love to hear from you you know what you see the current state of the zero proof market being so well, like you said, it's it's growing. I mean, uh, non-alcoholic and alcohol-free, and I'll let Keith give the distinction between the two. Um, but non-alcoholic and alcohol-free beer is a, a growing industry. It's still a small part of the overall beer category, but it's um, the biggest, uh, the fastest growing. Um, and so it's something that, you know, we really believe in, and we both also drink alcohol. So we're not, you know, we don't live a sober lifestyle, but um, we, like many others, want to kind of curb our alcohol intake. And while still, you know, we enjoy beer, we're beer people. And so um, I think there are a lot of people like us out there um, that just want a great tasting uh, alcohol-free or non-alcoholic beer. Um, and then especially the, the younger people, um, you know, our kids are, 19, 26, and 30, and, and they don't drink as much as we did when we were that, at that age. Um, but they also, you know, like the taste of beer and appreciate the, the different styles of beers. And so, um, yeah, whether it's the younger people or older people like us, it is a growing industry. Yeah, it is. And uh, what we're seeing is that uh, both phases of, of the market, the NA and the 
alcohol free are both growing nicely, which to us is great because we focus on alcohol free. And for your listeners out there who, who still may not know the exact difference between AF and NA, the federal government actually has a legal classification of low alcohol beers. Uh, so if it's NA, non alcoholic, uh, it's less than 0.5% ABV down to 0.01. So any measurable amount of alcohol is included there below 0.5%. And then the other classification is AF or alcohol free. And alcohol free means there cannot be any measurable alcohol. And the, the federal government uses um, a high, highly accurate machine called a gas chromatograph to measure alcohol. So it's very, very accurate and they can measure down to the 0.00%. Uh, level. And if they detect anything, they make you label it as non-alcoholic. But if they can't detect anything, then you're allowed to label it as alcohol-free. And there are very few alcohol-free products out there. It's growing, but still NA is is the vast majority. And I guess for your listeners, um, I guess uh, information, what they should know is that there are quite a few products out there uh, put out by some of the craft uh, people who who are getting into it, like you said, uh, you know, just jumping in uh, because you know this bandwagon has taken off, and they 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 have FOMO, fear of missing out, so they're jumping in, but they're not doing it the right way. And and for your listeners who do want to be entrepreneurial and get into it, you've got to do it the right way. And when you do, that's fantastic. But when you don't, uh, it can lead to issues. Uh, the main one that we see right now is that. Some of the products in the marketplace, I'm talking about beer products, beer, NA beer products. The legal limit, as I said, was no more than 0.5% ABV. We've seen some as high as about 2% ABV because these products are not pasteurized and, and they, they uh, re-ferment in the can. And so you start to see more alcohol formation in the can. Uh, so it's very critical that, that these products are made in the right way and then pasteurized to just lock everything in so it doesn't change and turn alcoholic. Uh, and that, that's a real critical point that, uh, uh, you know, your listeners, especially the entrepreneurial ones, really need to, to take heart to and, and, and uh, practice when they get into it. That's such an amazing point because, you know, oftentimes in a lot of the like, in the wellness spaces where a lot of these beverages first started emerging, you know, there are, there are side botanicals that aren't technically regulated right now. So, you know, there's not a lot of information on the cans, right? And now that the industry is growing where the in just general zero proof market has more eyes on it, we're seeing more laws being passed, we're seeing more regulation occurring, which is cool in the sense of public safety. And I just I think it's so fascinating that you guys are bringing this up right now about you know, the alcohol content actually rising in it. Because, you know, when you look at a label and you say, oh, well, you know, this this isn't just the regular beer on the shelf, I should probably be okay. And then there being any sort of health side effect coming out of nowhere, well, now, now it might be a little bit easier for people to understand. And, you know, again, that's why I really appreciate your guys' brand for being straightforward and saying, hey, this is the science behind it. This is why we are 0.00%. And, and that's really cool. I would love to hear how many, like how many attempts did it take you guys to come up with this formula? And, you know, we mentioned uh, a patented process for creating alcohol free beer. I would right. love to hear more about that. Well, like I said before, we started making um, cannabis beer. You know, we're in Colorado and Colorado is one of the first states where it's um, legal. And so we started making cannabis beer and you can, by law can't combine cannabis and alcohol. And so the first thing that Keith needed to do is come up with an alcohol free beer that tastes good because we still you know, needed it to taste good. And, uh, you know, alcohol free or an NA beer, while it isn't known now for being not great tasting, you know, historically it's been not, you know, the better tasting beer. So anyhow, so we started making the alcohol free beer when we were doing cannabis. And at the time we were actually using a, a method, method called vacuum distillation, uh, which is where you brew the beer like a normal beer and you take the alcohol out. Um, but that's a big expensive piece of equipment that takes a long time to make alcohol-free beer. And so um, Keith, being the scientist that he is, 
um, we're in our little office pilot brewery here outside of Denver right now. And um, he went in and he actually developed a way to make great tasting, full bodied alcohol free 0.00% ABV beer um, in a short amount of time without using anything, a big piece of equipment. In other words, you use just the regular brewing equipment. Uh, still needs to be pasteurized. Any AF or any beer needs to be pasteurized just because it doesn't have any alcohol in it. Um, but, um, you know, when we, when we decided to get out of the cannabis industry, um, part of it is because people were telling us we really like your beer, uh, but we don't necessarily want cannabis. Um, and at the same time, the NA beer world is, was growing just like it is now. Um, so we pivoted and we started selling our beer without cannabis, which is, uh, gives us the freedom to sell it, you know, through distributors or direct or also even online. We can sell it, you know, ship it through the mail because it doesn't have any alcohol in it. And so that's how we that's how we started with the alcohol free beer. I'll let you talk about the renditions other than the fact that our first one was a Belgian white like Blue Moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we decided to, to um, stick with uh, two flavors for now. So first is, is our Belgian white. It's a Belgian style white ale. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for that is because because of my Blue Moon background, I created Blue Moon. And so that's that's why we did that. And then our second is an IPA uh, because IPAs are really the, the largest uh, segment of the craft beer industry in, in terms of sales. And so uh, we have our two products, but we do have um, recipes and ideas for creating many, many more from, from stouts to sours and all kinds of other beers. But uh, over, over Jody's shoulder here, you can see our patent <laughs> right there. <laughs> so that's our, 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 our patent issued by the federal government for making uh, alcohol-free beer. And um, and we use it to make all of our products. Uh, but uh, as far as how many iterations, um, before, as Jody mentioned, we used a uh, vacuum distillation unit, which takes a lot of hands-on babysitting of the unit to make sure it's constantly running the way it should. Otherwise, it can drift and you can get the alcohol as high as uh, 0.09 or 1%. So that's where you've got to be babysitting it all the time. Um, and, and when we were using that, we were making 0.00, .00 beer. Um, and we uh, it took me about... No, maybe about five or six tries to get it just right, because uh, because I, I was familiar familiar with that and I knew what to do. Um, but then for the uh, the patent, uh, it took about oh, I'd say about seven months to to come up with that process that was actually unique and uh, patentable. So about about seven months, give or take, and uh, the federal government looked and they said yeah this this is a unique way to make uh, alcohol free beer uh, and, and it's it's a versatile patent because we can make alcohol free uh, non-alcoholic and we can even use it to make alcoholic if you want but the focus of it is to make alcohol free beer because uh, for us that's really uh, what we're all about is is removing every trace of alcohol that's I love this story so much, too, because it just goes to show you can become a master at something. You're a literal brew master and yet found yourself in a situation in a neat little pocket of the market to say, you know what, I'm going to start all over again with this whole concept of like zero proof, completely alcohol free and you know, making these iterations until you got it right. And I just, I think that story is really awesome. And it goes to show, you know, whether, whether you just started or you've been doing something for many years, you, you're still going to get to get play in the sandbox and you're only going to figure it out in the process. Like, it's not like you figured this out and solved it while sitting in your office. Like there was a trial and error here. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, you're absolutely right that there, there were a lot of uh, trials and errors before getting it right. But but again, uh, alcohol free really is, is uh, important to us because yeah. uh, for, there's some people who are very, very sensitive to alcohol. And they can only have alcohol free. They can't have NA products. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that if you drink a full six pack of NA beer at its highest uh, legal limit, it would be 0.49% ABV uh, in every can. So if you drink uh, a six pack watching your favorite uh, basketball or football game or sporting event, um, 
at the end of that time of drinking six of those NA beers, you will have drunk the equivalent of about one a one ounce shot of whiskey, 80%, 80 proof whiskey. Uh, so a, a one ounce serving of 80 proof whiskey. You know, some people may say, well, that's negligible. That's nothing. But there are people out there who that's a, a huge deal. And it's very, very critical to avoid it. So that's why for us, uh, it's really important to be alcohol free. And, um, and for your um, viewers uh, on our cans, you know, I think people are familiar, but I just want to point out that uh, when it's alcohol free, it has to say alcohol free, and then it has to say 0.0% ABV. Ours, ours, we, we use two decimal places. So ours says alcohol free, then 0.00% ABV. And then we also say that it's it's pasteurized on our the neck of our can so that uh, people who who look they can see that it's pasteurized. But, and, uh, but yeah, it's, for us, it's all about AF and the AF world. It's a really important distinction there because you know when my husband and I went to the grocery store and we were just checking to see if there's some new options out there. First off, grocery stores do not know how to organize these things yet, but <laughs> <laughs> their SKUs do not, they, some of them you're ID'd for and other ones you aren't. And I'm trying to figure out if there's a rhyme or reason to it. Haven't figured out the rhyme or reason. I think everyone's just confused right now. But also um, I noticed that some of the zero proofs and uh, like zero, truly 0.0, .0 and then the ones that are just less than 0.5% and the light, all of those were mixed together. So it was really confusing at first. I almost didn't see the section because I saw like, okay, there's Coors Light, like, you know, there's Bud Light, like, okay, but they literally mixed it up all up in there. So it was really hard to distinguish what was what. And, you know, before this conversation, you know, there's, there's not a lot of, um, there's, a, there's so much nuance to this that unless you're in the industry having these conversations, I, to be honest with you, I don't know if I would have been aware of that difference, especially because, again, I grew up in Wisconsin. I drank a lot of beer. I loved it. And like, like I'm not super, super affected by alcohol. Um, I've never had any sort of allergic reaction to it. But Tyler, my husband, does. He will feel a, a very big difference. So, you know, I'll be enjoying one of these and I'll be like, oh, I'm having a great time. It feels like or it like tastes like beer doesn't feel like it. But like I'm I'm vibing. And he's like, man, like I'm feeling it. There's got to be something in this. And I'm like, no, there's not. There, it says yeah. that there's none. But yeah. that little bit makes that big of a difference to him. And that's and that's huge. That makes a big difference because, again, I love beer. I miss being able to enjoy it on a hot summer day by the lake. So to be able to have this option available makes me so happy. And I'm so excited for the next com coming summer. So all of this being said, I am curious what your company culture is like in the sense that, you know, some companies that uh, make these types of beverages, they're very like, we're sober. But then other people are like, look, we just wanted to create this option so that we can all party together. And, you know, all of that creates such a different type of work environment, especially compared to, um, you know, the, our alcohol side of the of the company, you know, there's always going to be a little bit of a difference. So I'm curious and listeners are definitely curious too. What's the company culture like over there? And are there a lot of people who still drink alcohol or is there like a friendly mix? What's what's it like over there? Um, well, so coming from Blue Moon in the beer world, you know, like I said before, we're, you know, we drink alcohol as well. Um, but we really, you know, wanted to curb it and we really enjoyed drinking beers with and without alcohol. And so, um, and, and we think, and, and we've read, you know, that most people who drink NA beers also drink alcohol. So it's not mostly sober people that are out there, you know, looking for the, the NA or AF beers. And so, um, yeah, so, and then, and we know that, you know, some of the other NA beer companies, they kind of towards go, go towards, you know, people who are really athletic and some go towards, you know, people who are sober and, and it's all good. You know, it's a growing industry and we feel that it's good for everybody. Um, we do market it to, you know, 21 and older, because just like you said, that's kind of a mixed up thing out there in the real world. I think by state, even there, there are some states that we can't even send our beer to because they consider it you know, a, a beer, even though it doesn't have any alcohol in it at all. 
Um, but so while we still market it to 21 and older, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, just a, a really great, great refreshing beverages that, um, beverage that has, um, is healthy for you also, which you can probably get into. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, I think that's one thing that people don't realize is that, uh, beer that's a non-alcoholic or alcohol free, uh, is a, is a plant-based hydrating fluid. It's, it's, uh, healthy. It's got, uh, vitamins in it. Um. Uh, uh, polyphenols for, for health, uh, just lots of good stuff. Um, th there was some research published by the Germans uh, a few years back, I think in the 90s, where they gave alcohol, actually it was non-alcoholic beer, to their Olympic team. And what they documented was that it helped with uh, recovery. So the muscles and everything were covered better with uh, non-alcoholic beer than with uh, sports drinks or these other things. And the main reason was because the polyphenols from the hops in the beer uh, had a, a nice anti-inflammatory action on their muscles. So it helped them to really uh, recover. And um, so, so yeah, this, these type of beverages are really good recovery beverages. But uh, um, and again, if you want an alcohol-free, you know, you've got to search that out as a good recovery beverage. And, and uh, one little pointer, uh, don't be fooled by some products out there that put a zero in their name because they, they'll say like, uh, well, there's, there's a famous uh, stout out of Ireland. I won't say what it is, but they'll say their name, zero. So, so, um, uh, you know, so, so they'll just put it, they'll incorporate it in the name to make you think that it's alcohol free and it's not, and, and the government allows that because it's it's in the name of the product. It's not in the line below that says uh, the category, what it is, NA or AF. So uh, there's several products out there that, that put the zero in their name to try to fool people. Not, I, I won't say that, that they're actively trying to fool people, but um, it, it's, it's in the name. And so you, the assumption is that uh, that product is a, an alcohol free, but it, it is not. <laughs> Such an important distinction there because that almost happened to me as well when I was trying to buy that one. I was like, whoops, <laughs> picked yeah. it up and then put it right back. It's 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 a tricky market out there to navigate, which is why one of the big motivations as to why I'm here, putting some faces to all the cans and getting to know what's what. And yeah, and learning just how to read these labels. And, you know, I I I posted a little reel, like a, just a little video clip of me and Tyler at the grocery store when we were just picking up two different uh two different non-alcohol options and you know I was laughing and I was just like oh ha, ha, this is hilarious the cashier was like super not having it she was like this is this is the kind of thing that like just makes my job so much harder because they don't even know like when we tried to ask her do they were like, do you know the difference? Because I can go pick up a kombucha right now and I've never been ID'd for that. So do you understand the difference? And she got so flustered. That I was like, okay, I'm not trying to make your life harder. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Like I'm not. But <laughs> it's one of those things where I just I just want to know what why it's so confusing. And so it's it's really good that we're getting to the bottom of these things and understanding. So all of that being said, where can we find you in the marketplace? Where are your cans currently on the shelves? Yep. So depending on where you are, I mean, we do have some distributors that kind of started out east and, and we make it all the way to Colorado. We're not west of Colorado quite yet, uh, but we are in all the Total Wine and more stores. So that's nationwide pretty much. And then, like I said before, I mean, you go on our website and you can just order it on our website as well because we can ship it through the mail. Like I said, to most states, there's, you know, one in particular, Georgia, for some reason. They don't want us to do that. But otherwise, you know, most states we can ship. So pretty easy to find. And, and we're not available on tap. So oh, we yeah. get a lot of questions from our, our fans you know, saying, you know, when is this going to be available on tap? But we won't at, this, at the moment, we won't put it on tap because the risks are too high. By risks, I mean that uh, the fact that there's no alcohol in the beer is, is critical because alcohol acts as a preservative. To, to inhibit the growth of microorganisms that can make people sick. These are called pathogens, things like E. coli or listeria, things that can really make you physically ill to the point of even potential death. So uh, uh, those things can survive in alcohol-free and non-alcoholic beer. So when you put it on tap, if, if the, the bartender doesn't clean those taps 
religiously, um, and by, by that I mean, you know, once, uh, once or more every week, uh, then those can, can start to harbor different things and it can make people very sick. So we don't want to go that way at all. Uh, we want to make sure that each and every one of our cans is pasteurized and safe for consumption. So, so yeah, we won't uh, do anything in draft until we know conclusively that it's 100% safe. That's a really good point because it takes a whole team to ensure that's safe, not just you guys, but whoever you're selling to yeah. and whoever's on duty that day. So it takes yeah. a lot of people to tango in this situation. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you guys so much. I'm so curious if there's anything else on the horizon. Is there anything exciting coming up in the company that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, sure. Um... Probably he's always working on new. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, this is our little pilot brewery here. So he's always in there doing something fun and exciting. And so probably, you know, we're looking at you know, new new types of beer or something maybe yeah. a little different that we haven't seen out there. The, that, part of the nice part about the NA beer world right now is, you know, you do have a lot of people getting into it and there are a lot of neat new uh, flavors coming out. But um, he's got a good imagination and... <laughs> Yeah, yes, yeah, uh, created a lot of things in the past, and uh, uh, yeah, so so the sky's the limit as far as the future for for NA and AF beers, and I just love to play in our little pilot brewery and create new styles. So so uh, hopefully we can surprise people with something uh, in the near future, and uh, if they don't like that, <laughs> they can uh, wait, and we'll come up with some new stuff. Yay, that's so awesome to hear about. And I'm sure so many people are excited. I know I, I am. Um, I am curious, uh, just because I'm in Vegas, we have trade shows here all the time. The bar and restaurant one's coming up pretty shortly here. Do you guys do trade shows or do you guys like go and do events ever? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. We actually have quite a few um, trade shows and events. Um, tonight, we're actually doing one at the Children's Museum in Denver. It's a, um, you know, a fundraiser. And then we have two on two on Saturday, um, one in Denver and then one at our alma mater, CU Boulder, go buffs. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yay. So and they're, and they're fun because it's, it's a great way to take our products out there and get people to taste them, uh, alongside, uh, you know, there's alcoholic brewers with their booths and everything. And, but it's always nice to, to uh, tell people, you know, that this is a great way to pace themselves and to moderate their intake. And when people hear that, you can kind of see the gears starting to turn, thinking, oh, that. Yeah. And because uh, at the end of the day, you know, I think all of us uh, at one time or another, you know, we're tired of waking up in the morning with a hangover, headache, you know, feeling bad. Whereas if if you moderate yourself, stick to zero proof you wake up the next morning feeling fine. <laughs> it's a, you feel good. And it's like, I'm ready to start the day and, and you don't have any regrets. So uh, yeah, to, to us, that's, that's really a, a fun way to wake up and a thing to tell all of our fans. Yeah. Wholeheartedly agree here. Thank you both so much, Jody and Keith Villa of Seria Brewing Company. And I'm going to make sure all of the links are put in the description of this video. So if you want to check them out, you want to get an order for yourself, go ahead and place that order. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out because I will make sure to pass those questions along and we'll get them answered. Hello at marinamorris.com. And if anything else comes up, you know where to find us. But thank you both so much for being here with us. It's such a pleasure. Thank Thanks, you. Marina. <laughs> All righty. Well, have a great rest of your day, everybody. And as always, let me know if you need anything.